This is Thoughts Become Things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Well, again, everyone, and welcome to another exciting podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I'm Jeremy Lopez, and so glad and always honored to be with you guys today. And uh, I tell you, we have a dynamic audience. We really do. Shout out to Taiwan. Shout out to Singapore, Seattle, uh, Orlando, Florida. We have people from L.A., California, to Hawaii. We have uh, people all over the globe who listen to this podcast. And another part of our ministry, too. And I'm so honored and glad that each one of you just pull up a chair to the table of God, and we just have a blast just absorbing what God has for us. Amen. So I'm excited today because I want to talk to you guys about something that I believe is going to be powerful. It's not going to be real long today, but I want to give you guys food for thought if I could. And that is this, learning to forgive yourself. And I want you to think about that, learning to forgive yourself. You know, one of the hardest things I've noticed uh, in the world of, let's say, psychology, in the world of life coaching, motivational speaking, is basically can condemnation upon yourself. And you know, the Bible says, you know, in Christ there is no condemnation. And the great thing about that is understanding that no matter what you've ever done, uh, and here's the key thing that I've learned in my life, there are things in my life I've done that hurt people. There are things in my life that I knew that I carried with me for a long time because I hurt someone and, and I didn't maybe intentionally mean to do it. Or maybe in your life you might say, but Jeremy, I intentionally wanted to, I was mad at this person or you know, I did something I shouldn't have done. Here's the great thing about the kingdom of God is the reason why God forgives us and shows us grace and mercy is simply because of the fact, A, He made us. He knows we're going to make mistakes. He knows that we're going to have envy and strife and anger at times. He understands. He knows that. He understands that we are humans, that we're going to have that. And he also knows that, you know what, even though he tells us in his word maybe not to give in to those things, he also knows we will, unfortunately, because we're human. We live in a fallen world. And then we find ourselves attracting more and more and more of anger and bitterness and hatred. And God understands and knows that the system of the kingdom when it deals with law of attraction, when it deals with anything of God's kingdom, we have to understand that He understands and knows because He made it that, you know, we will find ourselves, you know, getting with the same abusive guy, you know, women, or the same abusive woman, or the same bad job. Or the same, you know, bad relationships or same financial, you know, um, problems we were in before because we keep on attracting the same thing over and over again. And so he knows that we've got to be able to dive deep in us and find that place in our heart to forgive what we've done to not just other people, but condemnation is usually put on yourself to say, look, look what I have done. And it hurts somebody else, but it hurts me worse because I'm the one that did it. I'm the one that initiated this pain for them. I'm the one that brought heartache to, to this person's life. I'm the one who made a mistake of my life. I'm the one who drank too much for years. I'm the one who did too much, too many drugs throughout the years. I'm the one who, you know, um, cheated on my wife or, 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 or husband for so many years. And, and now you're at the place where you find yourself sort of cleaned up, for lack of better words, you know, um, moving forward, but you feel like you're not moving forward because you know in your heart the reason why you're still struggling is because even though you know maybe God forgave you of these things, you didn't forgive yourself for these things. And you have to understand that, you know what, are you the only one on this planet who's ever hurt people? No. Unfortunately, no. We have all have. And we've all made mistakes. Every single person on this planet has made mistakes. We've all hurt people and we've hurt ourselves. we made bad financial decisions. We've all lusted over somebody in our lives. I mean, if a person ever tells you, I've never lusted a day in my life, you need to just call them a, a, a flat-out liar right there. <laughs> Don't really, but you know. Because the truth is, the Bible says, even if you say you haven't sinned, you've sinned. Because God knows that... We've all been there, done that. We've all carried the guilt and the shame of what we've done in our lives. And the great thing about the kingdom of God is we can find forgiveness from God. But the beautiful thing about forgiveness that God offers us is also it gives us enough forgiveness that is offered to ourselves, towards ourselves. And I want you to think about that really good. Because we so thank God for His forgiveness. But when we look it upon ourselves and we take it, internally and we say, I can't forgive myself for what I've done. 
Here's the idea you have to begin to, to realize. If you don't forgive yourself, you will literally never have the victory in your life. You will literally never have the promises of God fulfilled. You'll never have a prophecy fulfilled. You'll never have the promises of God that are yes and amen to you. And the reason why is because God loves you so much and we have to learn to love ourselves like God loves us. The Bible even says you can't even love your neighbor unless you love yourself because the scripture actually says, love your neighbor as you love yourself so you can't even love here's the beautiful thing about this picture that I want you to take a good hard look at that we can sit here and say the person I hurt I love so much I love so much and I feel horrible I felt bad for 10 years now I feel guilty condemned I've told them and asked them to forgive me and they have and I just can't seem to move on and I love them so much even if you love them so much guess what in actuality you really don't love them because the scripture says, love your neighbor, which basically means saying this, love everyone, who no matter who it is, as you love yourself. So if you don't love yourself, you truly can't effectively love someone else that you claim to love. Because love has to be given first, and forgiveness has to be given first to yourself. To say, you know what, I have messed up, I have done wrong. And if you truly say you really love that person, and you're sorry for what you've done, then you've got to begin to love yourself. Because in order for you to truly give them the love that you want to give them, and maybe, let's say, because of the things you, let's say, you feel like you've done towards them, even though they've forgiven you, then if you want to have effective love for them, and really live out the love that you say you have for them, then you've got to learn to love yourself, and you've got to learn to forgive yourself. And forgiveness of ourselves is, is a very powerful key, because if we don't, we can't release anything in our lives. There's nothing in my life I can release that's good. You know, the Bible says all good things flow down from the Father of lights, and in Him there's no shadow of turning, because God loves to pour down upon us good things. But all good things mean He pours it down, but it doesn't mean we actually contain it or we receive it. And the reason why we don't is because of unforgiveness. If we don't learn to forgive ourselves and learn to love ourselves. Now, we're not talking about stroking the ego. You know, oh man, I'm so good looking. I'm so hot. I got so much money. I'm so much better than everybody else. No, no, no. That's totally different. That's off the, that is, that is totally off the radar of love, of true self love. That's on the radar of egotism and, and, and pride, right? But to love yourself and who you are and forgive yourself. Can you imagine as, as, as a church or society or people that if we could learn to love and, and not just love, but forgive the mistakes that we've made, forgive ourselves what we've done? Can you imagine the freedom that lies before us? That God is just wanting us to jump and dive right into that. And there's such a beautiful thing about saying to myself, Jeremy, I forgive you for what you've done. But, and, you know, and even though my mind is going to play games with me to say, but I intentionally wanted that to happen. I intentionally said that to the person. I intentionally did that. And even though that might sound bad as opposed to, I didn't realize what I was doing, right? So we've, we've both guilty of both, of both sides. But even when I say, I intentionally did that. And what does God say? I have forgiven you because you asked me to forgive you. Why can't you forgive yourself? Well, Lord, because I meant it at the time. Well, do you mean it now? Well, no, God, I don't. Then forgive yourself. See, when you're in the moment of sin, let's just face it. When you're in the moment of any type of sin, you're in that moment of sin. You're obviously sinning because you enjoy doing it, doing it at that moment, right? And then afterwards, what happens? We start feeling, con we feel convicted and, and horrible because it's like, what have I done? You know, I can't believe I did that. I intentionally did that. But the beautiful thing about it is, how do you feel now about it? Would you do it again to that person? I know, I know majority of you would say, oh gosh, never. I would never put through, you know, that person's life, you know, what I put them through then. I would never, you know, cheat on my wife again. I would never do this. I'd never do that. The, the key thing is, if you know in your heart right now you would never do it again, and you feel bad about that, then you know what? Forgive yourself. Because that might have been what you wanted to do at that moment. But if God forgave you, even though he knew that you would enjoy doing it at the moment out of bitterness or hatred or strife or anger or lust or whatever, even though he knows that in your heart at that moment, you actually enjoy doing that. <laughs> and your heart was all into it at the moment, right? But he also knows right now your heart is not into that. He also knows and understands that your heart is not where you, you, it used to be at that moment. 
And if it's not where it used to be, why are you carrying something over when your heart doesn't even, is not even there anymore? It's like saying, we're going to go to Hawaii in vacation, and yet, you know, my, and yet my family goes to Hawaii and I stay here, and yet we're sitting here on the phone talking, oh man, Hawaii is so awesome, isn't it? Yeah, we're loving it, loving Hawaii. When I'm not there, but they are. Then, because I'm not there, how can I truly say I'm enjoying it when I'm not even there? So you have to begin to realize if you're at a place where you have changed, your heart is not where it used to be in that moment of, I wish they would drop dead. I hate them for what they've done. I want to get them back. You know, or man, she's hot. I'm going to sleep with her. No one will find out. You know, or if I just do this, no one will know. If I cheat on my taxes, no one will know. So in that moment, you're going to intentionally say, I'm, I'm doing this and I'm going to follow through with it, right? But think about that for a moment. Do you feel that way now? No, you don't, do you? Would you do that again if you had the chance? No, you wouldn't. You know why? Because you learned. You understood after the fact that you had revelation of, wow, that was really wrong of me. That was very bad of me. And your heart changed. If you can honestly say to yourself right now, I would never have done that from the beginning, and I would definitely never do that again. Then guess what? Your heart's not there anymore. Bring forgiveness to the place where you did leave and put that forgiveness, that oil of, of gladness upon that sin, upon that condemnation of what you remember you did and then leave it at the altar. Leave it there and never pick it up again. Because if your heart's not there anymore, then guess what? You're not there anymore. Why is your mind still there? If your body is not there anymore, which we know it is, is not, that means my heart's not there anymore. If you know in your heart it's not there anymore, then why are you keeping your mind there? Because what you're doing is you're showing yourself to be fragmented. You know, it's what I call false humility. Oh, I feel horrible, Lord, for what I've done. Well, that's good. You should feel bad for what you've done at one point in your life. But once you ask God to forgive you and you be begin to forgive yourself, then you're going to have to learn that oil of gladness needs to be present for you. And you need to give it to yourself. Because if you don't, and you know your heart is no longer in that sin, and your body is definitely no longer there in that moment, and your mind is still there, then then here it is, here's the, the situation. You're fragmented. No matter how many times you say, I'm free in the Lord, I'm free in the Lord, I love my neighbor, I'm free in the Lord, I love my neighbor, I'm attracting good things, but yet you still won't forgive yourself what you've done. You are unstable in all of your ways because part of you is left back there while part of you is in the now moment and the other part of you is wanting to move in the future. So you are so fragmented and you'll never be able to accomplish and achieve the things that God has for you until you let your mind forgive yourself for what you've done and then move on. So this is a powerful thing when you begin to really understand that God does love you. And God f has already forgiven you, no matter what happened. But now it's up to you to take up that responsibility and say, if God did it, I can do it. Because God is my example. And if God loves, I love. If God shows grace, I show grace. If God shows mercy, I show mercy. It's like this. Let me give you, give you guys a different story just for a moment. Sort of do a little rabbit trail. You know, when you look at people in public and you say, you know, to yourself, you know, um, of any robber, bank robber, thief, uh, someone that doesn't agree with you, someone that is totally has a different lifestyle than you, whatever. And you say, I don't like that. I'm, you know, those people are, you know, doing this and that person's doing this. Ask yourself the question. Take a deep breath for a moment and ask yourself the question, does God love them? Because I know each one of you are going to say, well, sure God loves them, even though they're doing this bad thing or wrong. Sure God loves them then you need to learn to love them. Would God forgive them? I want you to think about that good and hard. If someone came and murdered your wife, murdered your husband, murdered your child, and here they are sitting in prison, and you are finding it so hard in your heart to say, they need the electric chair, I want them to die because of what they've done, and then guess what happens? Over a period of time, I want you to think about this, over a period of time, what happens? you begin to have a softer heart to say, you know what, I feel bad for that person. I didn't realize they had a rough life before. I didn't realize they were abused as a child. I didn't realize that they were messed up. And then what do you do over a period of time? Your heart leaves the moment of 
that scene or that murder that took place or the or the missing that loved one because they were killed or murdered, your heart begins to change. Your body begins to go forward. And all of that, what does that say? It says this, that you know what? I have been at a place where now I can learn compassion and grace and forgiveness for that person. And you forgive them. But yet in other areas of your life, you won't even forgive yourself. And if you know God can forgive them and God can forgive you, then mimic God. Forgive yourself and find the freedom that you deserve in your life. Hey, as always, thank you so much for tuning into our podcast. And I hope this message is ministering to each one of you. I really do. And I love each one of you. I hope you guys, you all have a great day. And as I always close out with a podcast and say this, if you don't like your day, change your thoughts, you'll change your day, change your whole life. God bless. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.